You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's Vegas. It's rock. It's dogs. It's Vegas Rock Dog Radio. A rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. Stand by for great guests and cool advice. All in one rockin' hour. The phone lines are open at 702-483-4444. That's 702-483-4444. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is the rock and roll queen of dogs, Sam. Welcome to the show. I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you are listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. I am actually live from Las Vegas after almost a whole month of traveling, and I am not alone. I have my lovely husband in studio, James Dorigo. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, and hello to all. <laughs> what did you say you look like this morning? Because he's really tired. Very weary. Weary. He said he looks very weary today. So if you've seen us on Instagram, that's Jim's weary face. Um, he had a gig last night playing outside, and it's been over 110 degrees. So it's, that's no fun, breathing in hot air through a saxophone. So he's got a little bit of a sore throat today, and he said he's going to go on vocal rest after the show. Yes, I'm going to be very efficient with my voice today. Well, you're not and a man then, of many words anyway. And then I'm not going to speak to you. <laughs> Isn't that nice? He hasn't seen me for a week because he came home earlier. <laughs> so like I said, we've been traveling for, a, well, I, well, yeah, I've been traveling for almost a month now. And uh, we've been doing a lot of fun things, a lot of fun things. We started off in Nashville with the Blog Pause Pet Bloggers Conference. And it almost seems like it, it was so long ago because we've done so much since then. Then we were back home for literally two days. And it was a quick turnaround, wash what was in the suitcase, change out the clothes, take the dogs over to the pet sitter, which is always a challenge, you know, getting everybody prepared. And then um, off we went to England to renew our wedding vows, a blessing of our wedding vows at the Queen's Cousins Church at at Chatsworth. And uh, it's funny because the canon who actually uh, did our renewal looked like Elton John. (laughs) And everybody thought Elton John had married us. Well, and he played in a folk band as well. (laughs) Yeah, he's a musician as well. And um, it was just a fantastic day because it wasn't just about me and Jim doing that, you know, for our 20th anniversary. It was like family get together. It was. It was a big family and friends get together. And we have such a large family with my mom living in Spain. We brought her over. And it takes a lot to bring everybody together. So it was a great excuse to do that. And uh, we did have an absolutely fantastic day. The weather was amazing in England. We, we only had a day of rain, but it wasn't cold, and it was just beautiful the whole time. So that was the main thing that we did. We did a fabulous champagne high tea, which was lovely and very British, and just lovely for me to just be home. I, you know, wherever you grew up is home, you know. Um, and then we did some stuff in, Sh- well, you did some stuff in Sherwood Forest. I did. I it went- does exist. Robin Hood and all that, it does exist. I went mount- area. mountain biking in Sherwood Forest on groomed single track trails. Literally the day after we landed in England. <clears throat> and I thought, I don't know how he's going to do that with the jet lag. <laughs> but you managed, didn't you? I did. And uh, my brother-in-law has an office in Sherwood Forest, so uh, he works at the Forestry Commission. So that was just a real treat for Jim. We live, um, I come from Sheffield, which is the greenest city in Europe, so you can only imagine what it's like going from dusty Vegas to lush green grass. And, you know, just to see these beautiful wildflowers that grow everywhere, I just wanted to pick them all. <laughs> it was just absolutely gorgeous out there, wasn't it, Jim? And the history and the uh, architecture, which I miss a lot. And the pubs, we love a pub. Yeah, and... The food. Oh, the food. You know, people give England a bad rap about food. I don't understand why, because everywhere we go and eat, we have great food. So Great food. Maybe. I think I, people have this idea that people only eat fish and chips and, and eat boiled meats. <laughs> I think that's the that's the that's stereotypical, mm-hmm. but it's not. You have a very, very, very what us say, high flair food. But yeah, we always have amazing food when we go, always. And we have a brother-in-law who runs a restaurant, so um, he can always point us in the direction of other fabulous restaurants. And of course, did you eat Indian food? Yeah, we went my last night. Where did we go? 
to that place. That place. Oh, yeah, we did a new restaurant. So we have to get our Indian food in because that's what we love more than anything. And um, lots and lots, lots and lots, <laughs> lots of English chocolate and biscuits and crisps and cheese and onion pasties and sausage rolls. And <laughs> All the stuff that we miss. And the funny thing is, my friend Andy, who's English, also from Vegas, that we work together sometimes, he happened to be in England at the same time, and every day we just text each other what we'd eaten. Like, oh, I've just missed eating these Jaffa cakes and trifle and treacle pudding. And So uh, Andy and I need to go on a detox. He arrives back on Monday, so we need to go on a detox. But the food you miss, you know, it's just lovely to be able to eat all those. And I tried to bring back as much chocolate as possible. And I was overweight, and it was the last thing I was going to take out and dump was my chocolate. I'd rather dump clothes and dump chocolate, so... So that was fun. What, are you, what were you going to say just then? I don't know. <laughs> just going to comment about how you prioritize clothing over chocolate. And I love my clothes, don't get me wrong, but I'd never get rid of shoes, not over chocolate, ever. If you're listening in for the first time, welcome to the show. And if you want to connect with us uh, through uh, any of our social media links, here they are. Mr. Jim's going to run them off for you. They would be Instagram is at Vegas Rock Dog. What about a website first? Oh, well, the list. well, let me go. Let me start from the <laughs> He's top. He's going in a random order. The www.vegasrockdogradio.com. Ustream is www.ustream.tv slash channel slash Vegas dash rock dash. Just go to Ustream.com yeah, just and just search Vegas go Rock to Dog it. Radio. Yeah. Search. Why am I saying all that? <laughs> yeah. Facebook is Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Twitter is at Vegas Rock Dog Show. S-H-O. Uh, you can phone us in at 702-483-4444. That's the studio at 702-483-4444. Instagram <laughs> at Vegas Rock Dog. And you could buy things from us at <laughs> VegasRockDog.com. The blog is the Rock and Roll Dog.com. The Rock N, letter N, Roll Dog.com. And uh, we're also on Yap. Use Vegas Rock Dog Radio really simple so if, if you're new to the show that's where you're going to find us i just want to say a quick hello to one of um, my listeners from my hometown who i actually met a couple of days ago and uh that is sarah mcneil big animal lover just really lovely to meet her you know connect face of the name always a good thing so uh that was really really nice and of course while we were there i must have snapped a million pictures of other people's pets uh, uh, along with my sister's dogs my other sister's cat and you don't know this story, Jim. This is really funny that happened to me and my younger sister, Siobhan, on the last day. So we'd been, I don't know where we'd been. Oh, I know where we'd been. We took my mum back to the airport and then we ended up in the traffic for two hours. And what we did is we put, um, we started videoing ourselves in the car. Oh my gosh, for two hours. Hysterical. But when we got back to Serena's house, which is my twin sister's house, I said, oh, come in. I've got a present for you. And you just come and get it. So we get, we get out of the car. We go in the house. And then I come out and I have to say my goodbyes to her. So last time I would see her for a while. And she, we say our goodbyes. And she opens the door of her car. And there was a cat sat in her driver's seat <laughs> just looking at her. One of the neighbor, the gray one. No, it was the one that's got the uh, yellow eyes, big yellow eyes. That it, this Does she cat, keep it? No, this cat's always reclining on the driveway. Yeah, it's very casual, this cat. But we laughed at it. That cat had to have jumped in when we got out. Because we never saw the cat until we went back and she got in the car. We were laughing. Anyway, she picks the cat up, falls in love with the cat. Uh, and she goes, oh, if we find out it's a stray, I'll keep this cat, give it home. As it happens, it's my sister's neighbor's cat. And that was another thing that I noticed that you don't see here is a lot of outdoor cats in England. A lot. They're mousers. They are mousers. Yeah, there was one on the driveway. There's lots of they, mouses. Yes, because they, they live very kind of rurally. But, um, but that's a general thing anyway. People have outdoor cats. And it's not something you see here. If you saw a cat here outside, you would just think it was lost. Um, or a feral cat maybe. But uh, no, people have um, outdoor cats. My... Um, Younger sister, that her cats are outdoors, but you know what? They're smart. They know where home is when it gets dark. They come right home because they know where the food is. So, um, yeah, I thought it was, we laughed so hard. I never even saw the cat get in the car in the first place. Uh, and then on my last night, because Jim came back earlier, on my last night, we um, went to the pub. You know what? Nothing beats a British pub, especially if you can walk to it. I mean, that's just great to be able to walk down to the pub. And they had a quiz quiz night that night. We could have won £400, but we didn't. Um, but um, you can take your dog in the pubs. So I met a lovely little, um, she wasn't little actually, a lovely Labrador. Her name was Tia. 
I said, the drink, Tia Maria, because that was the owner's favorite drink. And um, she was just such a good girl. While well, they had their dinner, had a drink, and it was all very cozy and casual. And, and no one bats an eyelid. No one bats an eyelid. No one says, oh, I don't know why there's a dog in here. So you can take them everywhere, and that's just really, really nice. But, gosh, people... Because pubs are considered houses. Yes, they are, yeah. It's called a public house, yeah. So, yeah, that's really, really something I've, I do miss to be able to just walk. Because, you know, living in Vegas, and I'm sure it's like this in other cities too, that you can kind of have to drive to every, every place you want to go to. And it would be nice to be able to just walk, go and have a curry and a drink, take your dog with you. I mean, that's kind of perfect, really, isn't it, Jim? Mm-hmm. How far would we have to walk to get to anywhere like that? <laughs> Jack in the box, <laughs> quarter mile down the road. He knows how to treat a girl well. If you're walking, that's the closest place you're getting. <laughs> All the gas stations. Oh, Pete's, no. for, a, for a hot dog. <laughs> it's not the best, is it? But definitely lots of outdoor cats in, and, and cats that like to get in your car without you knowing about it. Another thing I did was my older sister. I have a lot, lot of sisters. There's many of them. Cherie. She bought a piece of land right next to the beach, Anderby Creek, near Skegness. And literally the back of her piece of land are sand dunes. And she's going to be building, her footings are in, and she's going to be building a really fantastic house. And she's got a caravan on there. So what do you call a caravan here? A what? Camper. Camper? No? Yes. Isn't it a mobile home? It's no, a mobile it's a home. camper. Is a camper something you drive? It's one that you tow. Okay, so it's one that you tow. We call them caravans. And hers is actually very, very nice. It's got two bedrooms. It's got a proper decent shower, a little bath in there. And so me and my mum and my oldest sister, we trundled all the way trailer. down there. Well, you could, nicer than a... It's a trailer. It's nice. <laughs> and it's at the most fabulous beach. Where, you, for as far as the eye can see, you do not see a house on the beach. And so um, I think I saw more dogs on the beach than people, people coming down with multiple uh, dogs and walking the dogs and people riding their horses on the beach and quiet. I mean, just spectacularly quiet and gorgeous. And when you get down to the beach, they have uh, two signs. To the right is that's, that's the, the place you go to when you've got kids on the beach. <laughs> and to the left is where you go with dogs. I don't know what you do when you've got dogs and kids. I have no idea. Maybe you're just not brave enough to take all of them down to the beach. But um, just beyond gorgeous and uh, very, very different from, say, if you went to California where they're lined with, you know, mansions, basically, overlooking the ocean. But um, just a stunning, stunning place. Met tons of people walking their pets. Tons of people. Lots of Jack Russells. Lots of just kind of... That's the dog. That's the dog. And um, so for anyone that's listening and you want to find out some of the best beaches, which I happen to be near one of them in Skegness, um, you can go to nearestbeach.co.uk. And uh, they currently have over 800 beaches listed, of which you can go on all of them. Some are full access for dogs. Some have some restrictions, but for the most part, it's full access. And they intend to cover 1,100 beaches. And you'll be able to find one that's close to you and exactly whether you can be on there all year round or part of the year or certain hours. And uh, I just thought it was a great website. But um, pets everywhere. People go in shops with the pets. I mean, it's just easy to integrate them into your life in England. Very, very easy. You're not restricted. And uh, like I said, there the two of the top ones, two of the top ones in England is Padstow Beach in Cornwall. Cornwall is, it, it says it's one spectacular beach. It owes a lot to its location. Cornwall is beautiful. Uh, a little out of the way from civilized life, this beach is serene, tranquil, and definitely long enough to give your dog a great run around the water is great and the sounds are golden as they come this is a great start by way of dog friendly beaches and this beach has no dog restrictions restrictions the other one is um, holcomb wells beach in norfolk another great choice of beach close enough to town so you can have a stroll to the shops as well uh, there's a hard run up and down the beach and as far as dog friendly beaches go as it says this is a bit of a funny one your dog is permitted only in certain areas of the beach and the other parts of it banned all year round so you just have to be very specific go to the website that will tell you exactly where and what you can do with your pets. But what to expect from a pet-friendly beach? Because it's not just about, oh, my dog can go on the beach. They cater towards your pet by supplying you with essential tools for keeping the beach clean and sanitized. Bins for your dog's waste are necessary in keeping the hygiene levels high so that the beach may be enjoyed by everyone. It also helps to reduce the smell of any excrement. 
I hate that word, that may be otherwise laying around, and all dog owners are encouraged to make sure that they provide sufficient means for collecting their dog's poop to dump in the bins. And basically they say, let's keep our dog-friendly beaches clear of any foul by each looking after our own and keeping it neat and tidy. Should you witness anybody not taking care of their dog mess, you should be reported. So they should you be should reported. pick up their poo and throw it at them. <laughs> let's see how that goes down. <laughs> Let's see how people respond to that, Jim. Although I do tell people, this is how I tell people when they don't pick a poop. Hey, there are dog poop bags over there. Let me show you how to use it. I've done that before. <laughs> Cornwall, huh? Cornwall I think that's Cornwall. where I think that's where Cornwallis comes from. The <sighs> famous British general that surrendered to George Washington. His first name was Corn. Cornwallis was his family name. Oh, think- the last name. What was his first name? Not general. <laughs> Corn. His name was Corn. General. His name was Green Bean. <laughs> You'll have to find out. You'll have to find out. So that's um, a little bit of info on pet-friendly beaches in the UK. And if you're thinking of traveling to the UK with, with your pet, it's much easier now. The quarantine has essentially been dropped in favor of a passport, so that shows your full pet's history of vaccination. So were you going to say something there, Mike? Oh. You look like you wanted to say oh. something. <laughs> your hair's looking good, by the way. It's growing fast. Yeah, you're a silver fox, and his last name is Fox anyway, so it all it all works, doesn't it? Let's take a quick break, yeah? Let's take a quick break, because I want to talk about this excessive heat warning that we're under right now in Vegas, and what you can do to pr- protect your pets. We'll be right back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Active for Pets is a new wellness platform and app that helps pet parents save time and money on their vet bills. Stop paying for unnecessary vet treatments. Consult with a vet online. Get unlimited access to your pet's entire health history from any computer or smartphone with the Active for Pets app. Vaccinations, medications, test results, and more. Active for Pets gives you access to a team of expert vets for non-emergency care. Make an appointment before, during, or after office hours. Skip the waiting room and get a secure online vet consult on your schedule. Taking care of your pets is as easy as it gets with Active for Pets. Ready to try Active for Pets? Listeners get 40% off a one-year membership. To get this great offer, use promo code PETLIFE on the sign-up page of active4pets.com. That's A-C-T-I-V, the number 4, P-E-T-S dot com. Or call 888-512-2848. Hey everybody, this is Tim Link, the host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Got some exciting news for you here today. My audiobook is now available. Wagging Tails, Every Animal Has a Tail is now available in audiobook form through audible.com, amazon.com, and iTunes. It's a collection of 32 conversations I've had with the animals. It's a fun, interesting, heartfelt book that's suitable for all age groups. So everybody pick up a copy of the audiobook, Wagging Tails, Every Animal Has a Tail. You'll be glad you did. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Now, let's return to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Here again, your host, the rock and roll queen of dogs, Sam. And we're back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. I have the king of rock and roll dogs next to me, Jim Dorigo, my husband. Who's feeling a little bit weary today from playing Very, a lot of gigs? Well, I, I had a hard time with the jet lag this trip around. I don't know why. I felt fine. I really felt fine. I think, I think the best thing that happened, although it didn't feel good at the time, was we arrived at what time? What time did we get? It must have been about 2 p.m., 12 noon, when we actually got back to my sister's house when we arrived. Mm-hmm. And we had a shower and we got in bed. And then my niece made it. Oh, she went and got us oh, the best egg salad sandwiches from the bakery ever. And then she came in and was like, get up. <laughs> get up. Otherwise, you're going to be sleeping at the wrong time. You've had your nap. Get up now. Otherwise, you're going to be you're going to mess up your sleep. And I felt okay that night anyway. And I think that's because she got us up. It didn't feel good at the time. She basically put the sandwiches in. Because your sandwiches. Now get up. 
<laughs> no, I had to thank Manny for letting us use her bedroom because, you know, they don't normally let you doing that. But um, it was great that she did that. And we got to meet my twin sister's newest newest addition, Buddy. He's a, a beagle and he was rescued. Big and, beagle. Oh, and he's, isn't he great? Ah, oh, he's adorable. I mean, an adorable boy. So it was lovely to meet him. And um, I'm going to post some really adorable pictures of, of him because he's got a great face, that dog. But, um, yeah, she's got Jem, she's got Buddy, and she's got Princess Madonna, who really is a little princess, isn't she, Jim? Mm-hmm. And um, we actually took her, after we had our, our uh, blessing for our anniversary, two days later we went back out to the same location and we did a photo shoot, just Jim and myself, and we took Princess Madonna. So she's going to be in some of our photographs, and we'll share that through a, a big blog post that I have to write of our adventures we've got i'm behind on writing so there'll be a lot of stuff popping up in the next couple of weeks on the rock and roll dog.com from our conference at blog pause to all that stuff that we did in england so it's very strange coming home though it's like oh because here it's just jim and i you know so it's just weird now it's quiet although let me tell you something my dogs licked me to death when i arrived home <laughs> they were very happy they were very happy until they could smell the dogs on my case. <laughs> then mm. they were they, they were a bit hmm. What's going on here? So yeah, so it was uh, it was nice to come home to my husband and my dogs. Although I got in bed at eight o'clock, eight thirty last night. I was exhausted. I've been up twenty four hours, and he he he, he te- no, you called me, didn't you? What's the name of that Thai restaurant in San Diego? I'm like, I'm sleeping. <laughs> Why are you bothering me? I've been up 26 hours. You were a little bit grumpy. Oh, I was so exhausted. I was so exhausted. Because, as well on the planes, being short, can't reach those overhead bins. And on the last flight, I had to stand on the seat. I felt really bad, but I had to stand on the seat to get my bags down. And no one's polite these days. No one helps you. So were I you in the window or an aisle? Uh, I was sandwiched between people on both flights, and I was not impressed with that. Were you in the middle section? Yeah, did not like that at all. I'd rather, if I'm on my own, I'd rather be at the aisle, so I don't disturb anyone when I need to go to the bathroom. But when I travel with Jim, I like the windows, and I can put my legs all over Jim. And that's rude, because I like to look out the window. <laughs> You're very rude about that. <laughs> um, what I want to talk about, we've got this excessive heat advisory going on in vegas but this applies to other places that get warm I, even if you're not as extreme as us you still should be be very very vigilant of how you um are with your pets when it comes to the heat so i wanted to kind of make this our tip of the day and that is let me find my little list here what, what we're going to be today like 115 something really insane someone told me that pavement temperatures can reach 175 degrees oh i believe it asphalt yes asphalt yeah. i mean get in your car i mean i don't even want to get in like it might be 113 but you get in the car and it's 160 before you go anywhere so don't even think of taking your pets but some people do so a lot of people that are looking out um for, you know leaving pets in cars and um we want people to be very very safe with our pets so here we go um i think what's really important is to understand understand the signs of heat exhaustion and understand why taking your pets on this weather is so dangerous um there's a rule of thumb if you if you put the back of your hand on the asphalt and it burns you guess what it's burning your pet's feet as well and we have times where midnight it's still 100 degrees and your best alternative is keep them at home keep them busy at home whether it's you know playing with toys maybe a little bit of training, or just binge-watching a, a series on Netflix with your pets. <laughs> Sounds really appealing to me, you know. So, uh, you know, sometimes you don't want to go to the gym. I'm sure dogs feel that way too. Like, oh, I don't want to go for a walk. So give them a little break indoors, really important, because even trying to put them in the car to go somewhere, it's so boiling hot. It takes forever to cool down, and y- your pets will be panting in the first five minutes. So uh, the signs of heat stroke... Um, and what you actually can do about it are really important. Uh, they dehydrate very quickly, so give them plenty of fresh, clean water when it's hot outdoors. And I picked up this information from Dr. Becca, who I really, really like. Um, she's a holistic vet, and she's fantastic. Um, she also says make sure your pets have a shady place to get out of the sun. Be careful not to overexercise them. I mean, in the shade, we're hot in the shade here, so that doesn't even work. Um, don't overexercise them. I just wouldn't even bother, to be honest. Uh, keep them indoors when it's extremely, extremely hot. And the symptoms of overheating in pets include excessive panting or difficulty breathing, increased heart rate and respiratory rate, drooling, mild weakness, stupor, and even collapse. They can also include seizures, 
bloody diarrhea and vomit, along with elevated body temperatures over 104. I mean, that's terrible. Um, animals with flat face, Persian cats, are more susceptible to heat, heat stroke since they cannot pant as effectively. These pets, along with the elderly, the overweight, and those with heart or lung disease, should be kept cool in indoor rooms, air-conditioned rooms, as much as possible. So um, they're the, the, the things you need to look for. What happens if your dog does have heat stroke? So you see these symptoms. You're, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Um, and here we go. So, again, the article says, whenever the weather gets warm, it's a good idea to pay special attention to how your dog is doing and know your dog. Breeds with flat faces, pugs and rescues, elderly puppies, and sick dogs are even, are even greater risk of overheating. Uh, things progress quickly when it comes to heat, stro- heat stroke. So as soon as you detected a problem, you need to act quickly and uh it's never it's never worth waiting it just isn't because you who needs regrets you know uh get your pet into the shade and obviously since the heat is the problem and the goal is to get them out of it and away from direct sunlight apply cool water that's not cold water that's not freezing cold water or ice water that's cool water uh you need to get water on your pet's inner thighs and stomach where there are a lot more large blood vessels and on the pads of their feet use running water via a faucet or a hose and avoid some Emerging your dog in a tub or pool because this could cool him too fast and cause other problems like cardio. Could you wet a towel down? You should, but here's what you need to do with the towel um, because submerging them, I say, in the water can cause cardiac arrest and bloat. Very, very dangerous. Um, and I say you, got to mu- you must avoid this cold and ice cold water uh, because it will cause the blood vessels to constrict, slows the blood flow and the cooling process. So here's what they say about towels, Jim. Yeah, you can use a towel. Do not leave the towel on them. It insulates them. So they don't, well, they won't cool. So you have to cool them. You could, uh, the best thing I think is to, if you don't have a hose or whatever, you wet a towel, you can wring it on them and you have to let them air, air out. So to help keep... Keep, to cool your dog, you want to make sure the water you're putting on, on your pet can evaporate. So the towel is not going to allow that. To, uh, then, like I said, avoid covering them up with a wet towel or even a blanket because rather uh, than allowing the water to evaporate, this will create a sauna effect, uh, which you don't want. Very dangerous. And so keep them out of um, enclosed areas like kennels and, and keep them where there's a fan, you know, or some air conditioning out them air out. Really important because that gives the blood a chance to the cool blood to move around and cool the rest of the body. Uh, so they say keep your pet moving. This is quite interesting. Encourage your dog to stand or walk slowly while he's cooling down so that his cool blood can circulate through his body. Uh, Give your pets small amounts of cool water, not cold, no ice, none of that. And don't let them gulp down tons and tons of water. Limit the water. uh, Give a little break in between because it can cause vomiting or bloating. And um, here's another thing. If you've got a pet that just doesn't want to drink the water, you could give them some chicken or beef broth and uh, avoid all human performance drinks because some people think that will help because that's what people do and you shouldn't and of course get them to the vet Uh, once your dog has started to cool down you can stop your efforts and take them straight to the vet you don't want to continue trying to cool down your dog for too long or you'll risk them getting hypothermia your dog will need uh, an exam at the vet even if he seems fine because uh, there may be underlying damage to the organs that you just can't see and even if he seems normal uh, the effects of heat stroke can continue up to 72 hours. So uh, you're going to have to do a lot of monitoring um, in that time. And uh, according to William Grant, DVM, the most common cause of death following heat stroke is disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, DIC, which is blood coagulating throughout the body. And it can occur hours or days after the heat stroke episode. Well, yeah. for people here in Vegas with these heat advisories, just keep just them a, inside. Yeah, you, you could avoid all That's of that That's ridiculous. It just is. leave your dogs inside. I mean, I know there are people that have outside dogs here, and I don't even understand that. That I don't understand either. You know, shade doesn't mean temperature control. No, it doesn't. And and, and that's why I don't like the law that we have for... for uh, extreme weather temperatures here um they say oh as long as you provide shade and water it's not enough you know what you go sit out in a shaded kennel and some water see how quickly that evaporates um and see how hot that shade gets so to me that makes no sense to me i don't see how that protects any any animals and i see a lot of people they can't uh, lots of people contact me oh my gosh i've seen a dog chained up it's boiling hot they have no shade or they have shade and and you know, those animal controls, well, they've got shade and water. They're not breaking the law. But we all know 
just through common sense, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be worked on most definitely. And there's no, you know what? What's the harm of actually making it very, very strict? There's no harm in that. You know, you'll save a life. You know, simple as that. So, um, so you've got to have a lot of street smarts, as we like to say, when it comes to uh, the hot weather and also walking your pets. If you decide you're going to walk, walk when the sun goes down. And uh, I would invest in some little boots, in all honesty. I would just invest in some little boots in very, very short walks. And it's the best you can do when the weather's like this. And um, because they're close to the ground, they're going to get hot quickly too because the ground is boiling hot here and anywhere else it gets really, really warm. So uh, buy the boots. makes it a lot easier. Now, for a dog that uh, that does dehydrate, I found this um, this. Uh, the remedy from natu uh, Dogs Naturally magazine, and they recommend a cup of coconut water, a quarter to half a teaspoon of sea salt, and some natural sparkling mineral water to help rehydrate your pets very quickly. Didn't we give our dog Pedialyte once when they were not well? I don't know. I think we did. I have no idea. That would have been a long time On ago. On a vet's recommendation. I think so, but it was, I think it was a long time ago, wasn't it? Um, and of course, with anything like this, check with your vet, of course. Um, but basically, the carbonation in the water transports the electrolytes from the coconut water and salt to absorb into the cells very, very quickly. And uh, that's a little remedy. But you know what? If you, if you use caution, uh, you should never have to find yourself in these situations anyway. And of course, don't leave her in a car, especially not next to me and Jim. <laughs> We will do something about it. <laughs> be sure of that. Um, so we'll be putting out lots and lots of those little PSA images that we put out saying, you know, don't leave me in a hot car. In fact, I did one this morning, and I used Princess Madonna as my model on the poster. And they said, you you better not dare. You, you, what did I write? You better not dare. Oh, let's have a look what I wrote. It's quite funny. You better not dare leave me in the hot car. I'm too precious, and that's true. Your pets are precious, and leave them at home. Whether they can be nice. Trust me, they prefer to be at home. When you leave, they're on the couch, they're ordering pizza, they're watching Netflix, they're in the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. Your dogs watch Get TV. Do they? What, what kind of shows do they, they be watching? Classic programming. They do like, like black and, they, and white movies. And they like Create TV, cooking channels. <laughs> Hey, my dogs are easily entertained, aren't they, Jim? Quite easily entertained. And there's a channel called the Dog TV channel uh, that you can subscribe to as well. So no need to feel guilty. Trust me, they're having a good time. Even for those people that don't let them on the couch, they're on your couch when you're not home. <laughs> Talking of outdoors and, uh, you know, hot temperatures and stuff that can happen when you're out and about with your pets. Uh, Lyme disease from ticks is uh, a big concern this time of year. And um, I found a free ebook over on Dogs Naturally magazine that helps you understand what the disease is, the prevention and the treatment of it. And uh, Dogs Naturally magazine is a really great magazine. So you can go over to, um, I'm going to pop the actual link up on our Facebook page. It makes it so much easier. But it's a free book on Lyme disease prevention and treatment. And if you're someone that, uh, like from Vegas, or you're in an area where you don't have to worry about ticks, but you are traveling, um, or like for us, if we went to Mount Charleston, which is what, half an hour away? If that, mm -hmm. uh, you've got to be concerned with fleas and ticks. Different, uh, yeah, it's... it's Terrain. You know, different terrain, different landscape. It's not a desert climate up there. It's yeah. a forest. So you do have to use your flea and tick. Um, I suggest all natural because some of these chemical ones, which are pesticides, in case you didn't know that, can be very, very dangerous, cause burns. And um, especially if you're only going up there for a couple of days, you can uh, do probably a home remedy. But if you go to Dogs Naturally magazine, you'll be able to find one on there. Um we're lucky we just don't really have to deal with it until we travel so that's nice it saves money and you're not putting anything toxic on your pets shall we take one more quick break yeah let's do that jim yeah and we're going to talk about what signs you need to look for and things that happen with your pets that you should not ignore we'll be right back you're listening to vegas rock dog radio with me sam your host and mr jim the king of rock and roll dogs we'll be right back yes <laughs> Amazing Pet Expos is coming to a city near you. Admission is always free and your pet is welcome. Shopping, adoptions, free nail trims, discounted shots and microchipping, agility, a pet costume contest, and much more. Plus, meet the guys from Animal Planet's hit TV series Tank and Pit Boss online at AmazingPetExpos.com. Bring your pets to the Pet Expo. 
Hi, I'm Dana Humphrey, also known as the Pet Lady. I travel from coast to coast to pet trade shows and consumer events to scout out what the hottest, hippest, and most unique pet products are on the planet, bringing you tips and tricks from top veterinarians, groomers, trainers on how to safely travel and live happily with your pets. The Pet Lady will be in a city near you, showing off the latest and greatest tech pet gadgets, cozy comforts, and fab gift ideas for man's and woman's best friend. You can learn more at thepetlady.net or connect socially and tweet with me at Pet Lady World. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. Vegas Rock Dog Radio continues. The phone lines are open at 702-483-4444. Now, here again, your host, Sam. Sam. And we're back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And in studio with me today is my husband, Jim Dorigo, who likes to go to the bathroom. Because he drank, what, like a liter of brisk iced tea? <laughs> He's dehydrated from playing that sax outdoors last night yeah. in 110 degrees. Uh, I, he didn't know it was an outdoor gig, I don't think, until he got there. So that, that <laughs> it's not something you would choose to do. Uh, but not a lot you can do once you're there. So <laughs> that was his situation last night. But uh, we just returned back from uh, traveling to Nashville and to England. And I just, you know... Work never turns off, you know, you, you see these pets and you, people walk with the dogs and the cats and the horses and you want to meet them. And I met an, a, a very, very interesting lady that I hope to be able to uh, have her Skype in from England for an interview. And she happens to be one of Britain's top equestrian and dog illustrators. And she's worked with every publisher you can imagine in uh, in England. And um, I just met her in the Sculpture Park. And the Sculpture Park is acres and acres and acres and acres and acres of land. It's absolutely gorgeous with uh, sculptures from, mm, I forgot his first name, Thomas, I think it is, who was inspired by the mines and the uh, uh, the female body form. And you walk around and I mean, it's just idyllic. I mean, there's a river and there's all these beautiful old buildings and trees that have been there for centuries and sheep and lovely people walking their dogs and I just got chatting to her and so did Jim. I'm talking about the uh, lovely illustrator lady. Oh yeah, she's, very, uh, she's world famous apparently. Yeah. Her illustrations are uh, in publications worldwide. Yeah, I mean really amazing. I haven't looked her up yet. I did and it's quite impressive and she um, she's an equestrian herself. So um, I'm hoping I can get her on the show but you never know who you're going to meet, you know, walking around a sculpture park, you know, oh and then we saw a sheep with a You never know when you're going to find a sculpture park. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, literally, think about the British countryside and sculptures all over it. Amazing. And uh, we did see a sheep with a, a poorly leg. So we went to report. I took a picture, kind of like that, like the sheep's not going to move. Uh, but I'm like, oh, this the sheep at his leg. And they said, oh, we have a tenant farmer. He's here every day. Don't worry. He will know if he's got an injured sheep and he will be treating it. And you know, but what a great place. Absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to share all of this in one big mega, mega blog post that I'm going to do um, when I get over this jet lag, <laughs> which I was up at five o'clock this morning, watering plants, wide awake, you know, on my back garden. So um, I might start crashing around about three o'clock. Um, I wanted to talk about um, things that you, signs that you need to look for, that's ha- you know, things that are happening with your pets that you shouldn't ignore. Uh, really, really important kind of advice and uh, this is by also by dr becker 10 do not ignore symptoms in dogs by dr becker and i thought this was really great lots of people contact me uh, particularly through facebook friends in, in particular saying my dog's doing this what do you think i should do my, my first advice is always get to the vet <laughs> i mean i never hesitate i did uh, an episode uh, not long ago with galaxy where she had blood in her um feces and I just happened to see, she had diarrhea that day, so I was watching her, and then I saw that, and I literally scooped her up in my arms, and off I went, driving down to the vet. Uh, not going to waste any time. I was very panicked. 
the vet said she's going to be fine. <laughs> I was very relieved, but I'd rather do that than wait. And so some of these things you should not wait for. And um, I think, you know, the longer you've had to pet, the more you know them. And so you can always tell when something's a little bit off. So here they are. And so these are the top 10. Uh, they may not indicate a serious underlying disease, but they, they should be investigated immediately by your veterinarian or an emergency animal clinic. And this is from Dr. Becker. Um, number one, loss of appetite and weight loss. Uh, that for me would be definitely a, a big sign because our dogs eat healthily and, you know, n- never, you know, not eat. So that's something I would be really concerned about. Um, often loss of appetite is the very first sign of an underlying illness in pets. There can be many reasons that your dog isn't hungry or refuses to he- eat, but eating can begin to negatively impact the he- their health within 24 hours. And for puppies six months or younger, the issue is even more serious. Weight loss is the result of a negative cal- caloric balance, and it can be the consequence of anorexia, which is, they, you know, they call it loss of appetite, or when a dog's body uses or eliminates essential dietary nutrients faster than they are replenished. Um, I think if I'd have left Galaxy with his constant diarrhea, that's funny, with his constant diarrhea, Jim, Jim's doing his whole other show by himself. <laughs> Then, of course, I, I'm gonna, you know, see some problems there. So <laughs> you're ridiculous, Jim. I'm not even. Gonna, I can't even show you what he's showing me. It's so ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but it can very quickly start to uh, impact their health. And um, what you need to do is. Um, weight loss that exceeds 10% of your dog's normal body weight will be a huge red flag for your, for your vet. And there can be several underlying causes, some of which are very serious. You need to behave. I'm all right. I, you know, you I need just, to be focused. I just can't get a job. I'm just like and, loopy. Uh, I know. He needs, some, he needs some caloric intake, I think. Uh, number two, uh, uh, lethargy uh, and extreme fatigue. And where your your pet is lazy, not la- well. They say lazy, but they're more like drowsy. But they're either being lazy or they're just indifferent. They just can't be bothered with you, or very very slow to respond to sight, sounds, and other stimuli in their environment. Um, lethargy or exhaustion is a non-specific symptom that can signal a number of potential underlying disorders, including some that are serious or life-threatening. And if your pet is lethargic for longer than 24 hours, it's certainly time to make an appointment with your vet. Coughing, coughing in dogs, unless it's a, a one and done situation which mine do that they do the one and done up but i always go oh, are you okay you know and then you they mean like it. a hack yeah then they never do it again um then you're going to be okay but generally um indicates um an underlying problem examples include a possible uh, wind pipe obstruction kennel cough bronchitis pneumonia heartworm disease heart failure and tumors of the lung all causes of coughing require investigation in most cases treatment so that's some don't ignore that one Fever. If your dog's temperature spikes, it usually means body's fighting an infection. And a normal temperature in dogs is 100, 100.5, uh, and it goes up to 102.5 degrees Fahrenheit height. If your pet feels warm to you and his temperature is higher than normal, make an appointment at your veterinarian. Difficulty breathing. A uh, dog in respiration distress will have labored breathing or shortness of breath that can occur when she breathes in or out. And breathing difficulties can mean that uh, not enough oxygen reaching the tissues and additionally dogs with heart failure may not want may not be able to pump enough blood to the muscles and other tissues. Uh, respiratory distress often goes hand in hand with a built up of fluid in the lungs or chest cavity that leads to shortness of breath and coughing. And if your dog has a sudden undiagnosed breathing problem, go to your vet. Uh, trouble urinating. This includes discomfort while urinating, straining to urinate and frequent attempts to try and urinate with very little success. If your dog cries out while relieving himself, seems preoccupied with that area of his body or excessive licking in the area, should make an appointment straight away. There are several, again, underlying causes of urinary difficulties, some of which can result in death within a few days. So don't, don't mess around for that either. Uh, bloody diarrhea, urine and vomit, which I experienced with Galaxy. Digested blood in your dog's poop will appear as black tarry stools. Fresh blood in the stool indicates bleeding in the colon or rectum and I the fresh blood. Um, e, either situation is a cause of concern and should be investigated. Blood in a dog's urine called uh, hematuria can be obvious or microscopic. There are a number of serious disorders that can cause bloody urine, including a blockage in the urinary tract and a bacterial infection, even cancer. So um, I just scooped up my galaxy and off I went and she had um, colitis. colitis. She had colitis. Um, and we fixed her up and she was great. Um, vomited blood can be either bright red, 
Well, that means it's fresh or resemble coffee grounds, in, uh, indicating partially digested blood. There are a variety of reasons your dog might vomit blood, some of which are relatively minor, but others are very serious and even life-threatening. So off to the vet you go. Number eight, pacing, restlessness, unproductive retching. Uh, when a dog paces and seems unable or unwilling to settle down, it can signal pain, discomfort, or distress. And one very serious condition in which these symptoms are common is the gastric dilation Vol- volus GDV, also called bloat. Another sign of bloat is when a dog tries to vomit but brings nothing up. Bloat is a life-threatening condition that most often occurs in large breeds and those with deep chests. So don't waste any time with that one, that's for sure. Fainting and collapsing. Oh, duh. I'm off to the vet straight away with that. And when a dog collapses, it means she's experienced a sudden loss of strength that causes her to fall and not be able to get back up. If a collapsed dog also loses consciousness, she has fainted either of these situations is an emergency even if your dog recovers quickly and seems normal again within seconds or minutes of the collapse so off you go to the vet for that one many many reasons why that could happen uh it could be a potential problem with the nervous system brain spinal cord or nerves or a mus- musculoskeletal system which is your bones joints and muscles the circulatory system heart blood vessels and blood or the respiratory system mouth nose throat and lungs so off you go straight away um and red eyes believe it or not or a red eye if the white area of your dog's eye turns bright red it's a sign of inflammation or infection that signals one of several dise- diseases involving the external eyelids the third eyelid the con conjunctiva cornea or sclera sclera try to say that with jet lag uh, of the eye redness can also point to inflammation of structures inside the eye eye socket disorders and also glaucoma glaucoma certain disorders of the eye can lead to blindness so any significant changes in the appearance of your dog's eyes should be investigated and like she says here you know some symptoms of illness in dogs are best handled by simply giving them a chance to run their course for example a temporary gi upset resulting from indiscriminate snacking or maybe one that got in the trash um, and other symptoms can be so sudden severe and frightening that you know immediately Immediately, you need to get your pet to the vet or an emergency animal hospital. And she said the the 10 symptoms listed above are less definitive, so she hopes that it provides you with some guidance in the event that your own pet develops symptoms that point to potentially severe or life-threatening illness. Now, here's the thing, too. If you don't have money to treat your vet, just go straight away. There are many, many avenues where you can raise money for, for uh, medical conditions. The, the pet community is quite amazing. You can start your own GoFund account, GoFundMe account. You can um, put a little plea out. You can um, contact some organizations. We talked about this a few weeks ago where they will give you some assistance. Stick it down your credit card. You know what? You'll be glad they're alive. You'll be less worried about a bill. Or you can do the, I think it's called care credit, which is zero interest, I think, through your veterinarians. And you can pay that off every month. So um, it, don't let that be your concern. Because, you know, you'll feel a heck of a lot worse. Oh, that's, I like your little five-minute sign. Uh, it'll be a heck of a lot worse if, if something really bad happens to them and you really wish you had just gone straight away. I say lots of people will pull together and help you out, that's for sure. Anything you want to add to that, Mr. Jim? That was quite comprehensive of you. It was. The I, detailed information. But I think that's really important for people to, you know, if you see that, mm, this is not normal, I need to yeah. do something about that. I mean, you rarely see abnormalities with your pets i mean they're way more resilient than we are yeah they they seem you know. to be i mean our pets pets are really really healthy but if you've got one of those pets that always gets into things <laughs> they're the ones that always have like the tummy upsets and and whatever aren't they what, mm. what is it that buddy did he got into something didn't he he stole a kinder egg and devoured it oh he <laughs> stole didn't you buy a second one yeah where is it i gave it away already. oh because i thought he'd mm. eaten that too no i got no. <laughs> yeah buddy he likes to take stuff and hide under the bed and there's no getting him out he is not getting out so you have to kind of let him do his thing under there so they've had to do a lot of puppy proofing at their house he's about 18 months old and he's always so much of a puppy it's unbelievable while we we're on vacation we did use our wonderful um pet sitter kim dumovich dumovich mm-hmm. yes um um, with the Southern Nevada Pet Sisters Association. She's actually the president, and uh, we like to thank her because we can go away in, and with confidence and enjoy our holidays. So if you're looking for a pet sitter during this holiday season, um, you might want to check out the Southern Nevada Pet Sisters Association in our area. And it, this organization, I think, is, is throughout the state. So you can find one in your area. Really, really important to find someone you trust, and you can thoroughly enjoy your time away. Not easy, though, when they're not with us, is it, Jim? We like them to be no. 
Well, but then when you come back and they're tired because, you know, they stay at the sitters and it's like resort living. Yeah, they play all day. They play all day. They eat, sleep, bark, repeat. That's exactly what they do. And if you want to buy that T-shirt, it's on our website. There you go. Go (laughs) buy buy one for you and a friend. There you go. Buy more than one. (laughs) Uh, remember, you can help a pet in need, either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information. You can even perform a fundraiser like we do to raise money and help them. Rescue your next family member. Replace the word shop with adopt. And always be kind to all animals, not just cats and dogs. They all matter. All those animals matter. Uh, thank you, Jim. You're very welcome. Thank you, Mike. It's good. I missed you while I've been away. Yeah. I've missed you while we've been away. Uh, if you've got a chance, take a moment. See if you can donate to a rescue today. Even if it's a dollar, it makes a difference. Thanks someone who works in rescue, because that is a thankless job. Trust me. And uh, next week, we hope to have some uh, interesting guests on the show. And uh, you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And always kiss your pets. Good morning and good night. We wish you a great weekend. And then to say, Jim, as we close out. Have a great weekend and enjoy yourself and do fun things. And keep your pets indoors. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening in. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.